Hunter x Hunter episode 120. Where is shoot? Where is shoot? Did he even manage to catch the punches? Did he see the punches that we did for him? Did he see the second punch and the third punch and the eighth punch? I only have two theories. One is that he crawled up somewhere to continue fighting in his mind. The other is that he's wherever Pom is. You can check there. This character black hole. The good news is you can just follow the trail of the massive amount of blood that shoot is losing. Fake X and X real. This episode already feels different. Moral sort of playing rock, scissors, paper with himself here. Stuck reacting. Okay. Good. That's moral. He's out. Reset. We reset. あなたが煙の結界の解除を決断し実行するまでに消費すると踏んだ時間。get you stuck needing to believe in things that are not true and instead put as many skill points as possible in your own abilities and skills to navigate as things present themselves with the knowledge that while you can't control the things that come your way you can control what you do and what you do has a very significant impact on things that follow another thing that i think speaks very directly to something we've heard moral say falls under the category of don't defeat yourself you have enough obstacles you have enough challenges without taking on stories that don't suit you you don't want to give negative forces any more life than they already have so for example things going wrong amounting to your own overall inability as a person these sort of labels categories also a very clear introspection on what is actually dangerous as dangerous as certain things feel like embarrassment, day-to-day non-life-threatening risk-taking really don't pose that much of a threat, especially compared with the vastness, almost infinite potential of the rewards that they can sometimes contain. And then sort of just as an aside on the wildcard note, at one point I mentioned this fun thought experiment where at any given point, any given crossroads, where you're not sure what you're doing, you think of your life as a story, and you ask, what, what would be the coolest thing I could do right now that would be the best writing choice for the story? What I didn't mention the first time is that that's actually really difficult because you will think of stuff and it will be immediately terrifying, which actually is probably a sign that you should try it. <laughs> with reason, of course, like all of these strategies as they apply to us in real life, come with the caveat of avoiding very clear potential game over events. Like, don't do anything actually super dangerous. Morals very fluid, shapeless, formless, adaptable, can fill any space, kind of like smoke. Moral also somehow, he's really good at optionality. Like, all, all the things he does, they, they have multiple purposes at once. They cover a lot of bases. I feel I may have also underestimated Moral. <laughs> what? Uh-oh. How do you fight a million little particles of glitter? How do you fight glitter? It's everywhere, and it multiplies. <laughs> なぜならこのすり抜けは苦肉の策。正直私は困っていたのですよ。閉じ込められている状況に。Is <笑> I guess this philosophical battle is not over. I like how this new poof power involves getting his chibi army to laugh at you. That's mildly disconcerting. Yeah, we got this too, right? We got this. Yeah, yeah, we can do this. This just became like a huge battle. The power is actually very evenly matched. You can't fight glitter, it gets everywhere, it multiplies, like cat hair. Yeah, I think that's the takeaway from that. 
You deal with what's next. The past is the past. Work with what you got. I mean, speaking of not just beating yourself, another one that you commonly find is being stuck in the past. Like, if only I'd done this differently, if only I'd done that differently. Absolutely nothing you can do. It's just pouring water into the sand. It's gone. You focus on what's coming next. I mean, reflecting on the past is useful if it's for that purpose, to inform your future choices. But this whole, like, if only, if I had only done this, I would be here now. It's so much wasted energy. He doesn't really seem that convinced. Oh. Oh no, he just got stomped. And the laughter hurts more than the stomping. We kind of need that. At least he's in good spirits again. That's tough. That is tough. Don't think about the past. It's <laughs> after the current circumstances. Oh god. Oh no. Yo. Oh, this is an awesome tag team. This whole thing is just chaos. It's just complete chaos. All things considered, this is the best edge we've ever had so far. Minus the, the prostrate pedo. Because the Yakuza dead stacking up, right? Okay, that's really cool. Which one's the real knuckle? But the area attacks, though. He has so many area attacks. That's some pretty crazy APR. No idea where this is going. I don't even want to know how that works. Now we're good. Couldn't happen to a nicer, more upstanding person. <laughs> Don't you understand my problems? Because I'm so selfish. I have dollhouses, giant livable dollhouses. I also have a lot of meat. It was that easy. She just couldn't have been asked. Narrator, there was no treasure. <laughs> Wait, am I getting this right? I don't really know what the Federation is. Is this more hints into the corruptness of this agency? Is the Hunter Association? Or external politics? God, I really hope Bezef lives. Oh yeah, back to my problems. When billions. Is this not just an instant kill for everyone? For anyone? Little deadly nano machines. Poof would never need to throw a punch. If he makes a clone a billionth of his size, does it laugh at a billionth of the volume? I was also calling for the destruction of the cocoon right away. Speaking of optionality, Poof handled that really well by acting first. I also don't think this necessarily makes moral wrong. Sometimes the right choice leads to the wrong outcome, and almost any difficult choice is going to contain unknowns. Moral destroyed the barrier. The outcome was not great in terms of letting Poof free, but Moral's still alive, still around to fight another day, which might not have been true as far as he knew if he had waited for whatever the cocoon thing was. It seems like the real mistake was losing the pipe. He's really gloating it up. And he still ended up splitting himself into little tiny pieces. The little laughing bees. Right. Oh, he got his eye back. 
理屈をサナギへの攻撃に転嫁したに過ぎない。Right, I think another thing that lends credit to Moral's strategy is that if you're dealing with severely overpowered enemies in fewer number, every one of your allies becomes that much more critical. So it's not just time, it's also staying on the playing field. It's like how sometimes in strategy RPGs, if you lose an important unit in one of the first couple turns, you know it, you've already lost. Really, it feels like their only chance is their combined powers and teamwork. It's very unlikely they achieve mass victory through soloing the Royal Guards of the King. Also, just in general, I think speed is an underrated tactic. Sometimes just blasting through a problem imperfectly works out to your. Your advantage because you keep from being stuck on the same thing that really doesn't have much consequence anyway for too long, and you're on to the next problem. You have forward progress. It's definitely not always the best case, but often it's better than being really hung up on something for a very long time, sacrificing a lot of energy and going circles over and over again to really get something perfect, which may not be possible anyway, only to find out that it really didn't have that much greater significance in your life or towards the problem. A little bit of a tangent, but one piece of advice I've often heard is to fail fast and often. Like if you have a goal, I think for a lot of people, the default is to try to work it out mentally perfectly first before. Starting and a lot of people just never make it out of that stage. When really a lot of things are impossible to plan from the outset anyway, because it's not just you imposing your will on things, there's interplay between you and the world and life. And so it sort of has to be adaptive. So you have to enter the playing field. You enter early, you take the feedback, which might be in the form of failure, and you iterate. It's almost even a, a direct tapping into of forces of evolution. Evolution is an iterative process where growth comes through attempts. And it does take a lot of time, but the time is neutralized by the fact that existence doesn't really care about time. It's patient. For humans, since we Do care about time and have limited time. One way to think about it is iterating as quickly as possible. I'm starting to feel like the narrator has favorites. There's some favoritism here. Moral good, knuckle bad. Right, I don't really see how this holds up. And you just lost permanently. Yeah, this is exactly what I feared. That scared the hell out of me. That scared the hell out of me. That was an example. This is feeling sort of wasteful right now. There's no way Knuckle can get in there. With the enemy. Just chilling. Is he crying? He's still around. He wasn't totally defeated by self doubt. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Oh, is that Palm? Oh, it's Palm, isn't it? I think we found Palm. She's in a sack. Still better than Bizef. One sack to another. Watch the thugs. Depends on which, which direction it's going. He rode a dragon somewhere else. <laughs> Maybe Kalua can get in here. Lightning strike from above would do a lot right now. I hope Knuckles doesn't fall for the same thing twice. He has eyes everywhere. It's smoke, it's smoke. It's not smoke? It's smoke. I knew it. <laughs> I wasn't scared at all. Oh, really? So Knuckles safe. This is real anger? <laughs> oh man, the, the double and triple fakes. That was so well played. Damn, Moral's a genius. And Knuckles' initial plan came to fruition. Hitting him in that one critical moment. It's so cool that Moral and Knuckle figured that out wordlessly as well, that they're so in sync. Damn, the Moral mind games is wild. It's crazy. Always the one making the decisions. I bet he'd be really great at Gunji. And here I was feeling pleased with myself for figuring out that the, the decoy Knuckle was smoke, which I never doubted for a second. That was just the beginning of the fake out. Beautiful. Oh, they did discuss this. Like a long time ago. Talk about preparation. Yeah, I mean, he didn't care before about Shu. Why would he care now? 
I'm really happy Knuckles still in this. That also felt like it needed to happen. The last episode with the eight hit combo was really satisfying, but there was something partially missing from it, which is that Knuckle did fall into Yuppie's trap and was only saved by intervention from Kalua. This time there was an assist, but Knuckle was in on it. He was a key actor and he got it right the second time. And in doing so completed the initial plan he had to get a hit in while Yuppie was charging. That APR is gonna be pretty, pretty good right about now, no? Nav saved him. Nav's still doing, doing his thing at least, even if he's not actively participating. Oh, I feel just a huge wave of darkness just coming back into this room. This is interesting. It's one of the most cutting insults that can be hurled at you, I've learned. Going alone with two royal guards and no Kalua. Amazingly. This episode was such a ride. So many things happened everywhere at once. Like APR, moral stock just continues to rise. Personally, I found this one knuckle punch more satisfying than the eight or so last episode because of what was behind it. And also the fact that it's a teacher-student bond fighting side by side. We never saw their instruction. We haven't seen much of their history, but I think you can read a lot into their relationship and how much they each mean to each other by their relationship and who they each are. They both have this real warmth and softness. They have a lot of faith in each other. To see them deliver that tag team attack, utilizing both of their best strengths, moral being not as necessarily, but his tactics, tactical abilities, and Knuckle being his boldness and of course his gangster debt. To completely overwhelm Yupi, it's amazing. Poof becoming simultaneously the cutest and most irritating and also most deadly nan user of all time maybe. With the nano machines thing, I fill your lungs with a billion bees, micro bees, and then ending it on a massive cliffhanger that honestly I'm not quite sure what to make of with Poof and Pito and Gon all in the same room. Gon alone there, no allies just with his emotions and dark thoughts. I don't know if Poof cares about Kamugi. There's a lot of evidence to support the idea that he hates Kamugi and would love to see her disposed of. There is no doubt about Poof's loyalty to the king, but there is evidence that it's a different interpretation of loyalty and love of the king than Pito. Pito seems to actually really love the king for who he is, likes who he's becoming, and maybe sees Kamugi as important to that, really wanting to serve his wishes directly. Poof has been shown to be in love with his own specific mental version of the king, which no longer really matches what the king is becoming to which Kamugi is a threat. Does this pit Pito against Poof? That would be really interesting. I think Gon would be really upset at Poof if he's allowed to attack Pito when Gon isn't. That is a real powder keg situation. It's a disaster waiting to happen.